The few BSD viewers I have, along with the people who hate Sudo, have been asking me to do a video about Duaz for quite a while now. By quite a while, I mean about a year and a half or so. And today, we're not just doing a video about Duaz. I've actually fully migrated my system over, and I'm no longer using Sudo. It only took me a couple of minutes to do, even though Arch does have some weird problems with it, where it actually has dependencies on Sudo, but getting rid of those problems, it actually works exactly as it should. Now, if you don't know what Duaz is, basically it is similar to sudo in the fact that it provides a way to run a program as a different user. That user is typically going to be the root user because normally that is your one super user, but it doesn't have to be. So if I wanted to run a program, let's say I have the Brody account and the John account. If I want to run a program as the John account while being the Brody user, I could do that with either sudo or Duaz. Now, it's very important to understand that Duaz is not a sudo replacement. If you need sudo and you need all of the features that sudo has, go and use sudo. What Duaz is instead is an alternative with a very different set of goals. Those might sound fairly similar, but if we look at the sudo man page, we'll realize this program has a lot of extra features. A lot of these features you probably have never even considered using. There's a lot of stuff you can set inside of the config file. And overall, it's a really powerful application. Did you know that you could temporarily change your user as well as change the group they're in? I didn't know that. I've literally never used that feature. But when you have a program that is roughly in the range of 220,000 lines of code, there's going to be a lot of features there that you've just really never even considered using. If you do use those features, that's fine. Keep using sudo. But if all you do is what I do, which is sudo nvim, sudo vim, sudo pacman, sudo other programs, and that's all you use sudo for, maybe Duaz makes a bit more sense. Because if we look at the man page for Duaz, this is the man page. This isn't just bad documentation. This is everything well documented. And this leads to a program that is roughly 400 or so lines long. Now, while I don't care about the binary size of sudo, because I have plenty of storage space, and you probably do as well, when it's something where security is very important, Having a much smaller surface where you could feasibly audit everything happening in Duaz honestly makes for a much safer experience, especially when sudo is no stranger to having bugs that have existed for over five years. Now, being on Arch Linux, I have access to open Duaz inside of the standard repos. On other distros, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be packaged. I know that on Gen 2, it is. I presume on Void as well. But I don't think Ubuntu or Debian have a package. Luckily, being such a simple application, you should be able to compile it fairly easily anyway. Now, because this is just a port to Linux, there are some other ports that do exist as well. Open Duaz is the one that I am using, but if you want to try another one, there are a few others available over on the AUR. I cannot speak for the quality of them, and from what I've seen, the developers of the different projects all like to argue with each other over which one has the better Duaz implementation. I don't know which one it is, but Open Duaz is what I'm using. Now, before you go and get rid of sudo, you need to make sure you actually make the Duaz config file, because it won't have one by default, and if the config file isn't set up correctly, well, now you're going to have to find some other way to fix it. Whether that is by using su, logging in as the root user, doing some other stuff to get access to root files, make sure you go and make this file. This file is going to be located inside your Etsy directory, inside of a file known as doas.conf. Now, we'll fix up the permissions for this just afterwards. For now, though, let's go into the file. So, what we need to set in this is one line at a bare minimum. You can do plenty of other stuff afterwards, but if we go and add in permit colon wheel, what this is going to do is allow any members of the wheel group to run the do as command to actually run something as a different user. Once that is done, make sure you save the file. And now we're going to go and change its owner and its permissions. So if we do a own dash C, we're going to make sure the owner is the root user. Now, it probably already is the root user considering its location, but this is just double checking this is the case. Especially if you made this in your home directory and then you were to copy it over. 
So the other thing we need to do is we need to do a chmod command. This is going to be making sure that the root user is the only one who has permissions to actually read it. So this is going to be 0400, once again, on the same file. And then once this is done, then you're pretty much going to be good to go. From this point on, if you want to do something like do as pacman dash syu, that is going to go and run do as. It's going to let us run Pac-Man perfectly fine. It's going to prompt us for an update. Give it just a moment when it syncs. There we go. Okay, nothing to do. But it actually ran the command. While do as is certainly simple, it is by no means powerless. And there's a lot of really cool stuff we can actually do. So let's go and run a man do as .conf, And this is the syntax that every single line in the file is going to be in. It might not be entirely obvious from this example, so let's actually go and work through one. So let's say, for example, I want to go and run the pacman-syu command, but I don't want to have to use my password every single time. This can be done, and it won't affect any of the other commands. So in this case, we're going to want a permit because we're permitting something to happen. Or if you're denying something, you could use deny instead. This could be something like uh, run every command except for Pac-Man. Now, we also need to set an option. So we have things like no pass, no log, persist, keep emp, and even set emp if you want to set some different environment variables. For what we're doing, though, we just need to set no pass. Then we need to set what group is allowed to use this. Now... Wheel is the general group you use when you're doing things related to changing the user. But this can be any group in your system. If you're doing something with audio, maybe you'd set it to the audio group instead. Now we need to include who this can actually be run as. Now, while this part is optional, if it's something that needs to be run as the root user, there's no harm in specifying that it can only be run as the root user. Now we also need to go and specify the command that we're going to be running. So in this case, it's going to be Pac-Man. Now I've seen some sources saying you shouldn't use relative paths. Instead, you should use the absolute path. But the problem with that is if you use the absolute path, then you have to include the absolute path when you want to go and run this as well. So in this case, it would be slash user slash bin slash Pac-Man. That is never how I run it. So instead, I'm going to use the relative path. Then we're also going to include the args we want to use as well. So in my case, that is going to be SYU. So if we go and save this, assuming I don't have any syntax errors, if I go and run do as pacman syu it won't prompt us for a password, as we can see. But if I try to do something instead, like say, uh, dash S, and I want to install, I don't know, coin top that actually will require a password. Now, there is actually a way built into Doaz to actually check the syntax of our file, but you'll know the syntax is broken because Doaz won't actually work. So what we're going to do is a Doaz Doaz, I'll explain why in just a bit, dash capital C slash Etsy slash Doaz dot com. And in my case, nothing is going to be returned. That means the syntax is fine. If something is returned, that is bad. So the reason why we're doing do as do as rather than just a single do as is because when you use the dash C command to check the syntax of the configuration file, it doesn't actually prompt you to elevate your privileges. So I don't know why it doesn't do that, but it probably should. Now, recently I did a video about sudo edit, and I think sudo edit is a really, really useful addition that sudo has. Basically, it's a simple way to go and open up an editor with root privileges without going and making the editor actually run as the root user. The danger of running your editor as the root user is that many editors like Vim, for example, have the ability to execute arbitrary code. So you could do something in Vim like rm-rf your root directory, and that would actually run. Now, do as being a much simpler program doesn't have a built-in way to do the same thing as sudo edit. Luckily though, the internet exists and there are scripts that already do this. I'll leave this one linked in the description down below, but this does basically everything I would need. It sets your editor based on your editor variable. And if I go and run do as edit, let's say we run it on the config file. So do as dot conf, it's going to prompt us for our password. Okay, let's go and remove the line we added before, save the file. 
The one problem is it is going to prompt us for our password when we leave. That's because Duaz isn't actually persisting the password. Now, speaking of persisting the password, that can be done. Instead of doing that line we had in there before, what we would do instead is add in persist here, and it will make it so once we've added the password once, we won't have to run it again. The problem between this implementation and the BSD implementation is this persistence is handled inside of the kernel on BSD, but there is not an equivalent over on Linux. So this is going to be done through timestamped files the same way it is done inside of sudo. So it's no less secure than what sudo does, but if you want it to be as secure as BSD, that just isn't possible right now. Now, if you're an Arch Linux user and you've gone and uninstalled sudo, you might have noticed one little problem when you tried to run make package, and that is that make package is designed by an, <laughs> an absolute idiot. So the way this works is it hard codes looking for sudo, and if sudo is missing, it will run su. It doesn't look for do as at all. So if su is missing, it just will not work. This can be addressed, uh, but it cannot be addressed by configuring make package. Right now, there's no configuration option for this. There's been a couple of patches recently that have attempted to address this, but none of them have actually been accepted. So instead of that, um, this isn't a good solution, but ln s slash user slash bin slash do as slash user slash bin slash sudo. We make a sim link from uh, do as to sudo. Yeah. I don't like it, but it does work. If you don't use make package though, and instead use yay or peru, uh, neither of these are going to work either. So if you use yay, what you can do is run this command right here every time you try to install something. So I'd recommend just setting this as an alias to make sure it doesn't have to be repeated every single time. And if you're using Peru, Peru has a config file. So this is actually going to be a little bit easier. What we do is we go into that config file and we go and set inside of the bin section, sudo equals, and then the path to do as, and you're good to go. When I tested do as over on my Gen 2 VM, I really liked it. So I thought, hey, maybe I should actually go and try this out on my main system and see if it actually works. I knew that doing this on Arch would be a little bit annoying just because of the dumb way the Arch build system is designed, but it's not that difficult to fix, and any of the other programs that expect sudo to actually be there should hopefully be addressed by that sim link. If they're not, you will have to go and address those as they come up, but most programs don't try to call sudo from internally in the program. I'm not going to sit here and call sudo bloat. Sudo has so many lines because it has a lot of features that are really useful on things like web servers. They're just not that useful if you're going to be a home user and all you're going to do is just run sudo pacman, sudo apt, sudo vim, so on and so forth. If you're on a web server and you actually want sudo or you need sudo for your home usage for whatever reason, go ahead and use it. That's perfectly fine with me. Maybe this video finally convinces you to do as, in which case be sure to drop it a like. And if you really like this video and you want to go and support the channel, please be sure to go check out my Patreon subscribe to LiberaPay if you want to go and get your name onto this list over here. I've got a podcast also linked down below that is Tech Over T available basically anywhere. And I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.